Okay, what's up guys? I'm back and I'm going to be showing you how the first round of Season 2 went for K235. We went up against K174, the famous Raven. Beforehand to every KVK, I always spend like 30 minutes beforehand to bookmark a bunch of castles that seem to have a lot of power so that I can go after it. And this is one of the castles. Again, I'm still really sick, and I've been sick for a long time. I'm tr I'm like slowly getting better, but I s this sore throat just won't go away. Bear with me, please. I'll try to not talk throughout the entire video so you can actually enjoy it. But in the beginning of every KVK, okay, make sure you're speeding up all your hits because you don't want them to go on and bubble. You're going to have a really booty feeling if they shield and you're just like, seriously, damn, I should have sped that. No regrets, okay guys? In the beginning of the KVK, speed it. Beginning and the end of KVK is where it's at. Every single cast saw around me, the small ones, I'm trying to scout because I really want to find like millions of resources. Finding millions of resources is like finding buried treasure. You get so, so happy because later throughout the KVK, as you guys all know, we have to always heal, and the, that green bill is traumatizing. Oh wow, look, he had only beige on his wall, but he did pretty good. That means his stats is probably really good. Good job. It's also a really good trick, you know, if you can do it fast to get one hit as a trap castle with one here on your wall, or some pair of bad heroes like the purple ones and then later switch out to a really good one when someone rallies you. So I'm just going through all my other coordinates that I have bookmarked. I'm gonna go over to this one. I feel really bad because when I ported here I did not realize that one of my teammates was next to me until I ported down. That's why I looked and like oh snaps. Anyways I'm still going to be looking for resources. Um, yeah, so this one barely had anything. In the beginning of KVK, of course, I want kills as much as anyone does, but honestly, I want resources a lot more. If I could find a KVK where I can find a bunch of resources, I'd be so happy. I have a lot of farms, but still, resources can make a person's day. Gonna say been thinking of you, why don't you come through? There's nobody in my place I'm always your afterthought When you're in that state of mind No, you won't, but I wish you'd stop Wasting my time Yeah, because you all
just wanna change And if only the time and space between us wasn't lonely I'd disintegrate into a thousand pieces Think I'm making a mistake But if I decide to break, who will fill the empty space? So Okay, so with the new battle logic, you're going to have to for sure put T10 infantry in the uh, palace as well. Just because if you put all your attacking troops, then your attacking troops are all going to die. But the problem that we had with this KVK was that not everybody knew about the battle logic yet, so everyone just actually just wanted to put the archers inside the palace to get kills and points. Which, who doesn't want kills and points, but if your attacking troops are all gonna die, there's really no point because you're not going to be able to get any points at all. But seeing the enemy troops, um, they barely put any infantry either. So let's see how it goes. You're seeing right here that we're having a lot of trouble figuring out who should put T10 infantry because earlier, I had 200k inside and I think like only a very few people had under 50k maybe so we're gonna have to work on that k235 now we're just waiting to see if they're actually going to try and rally again since they lost the first time Well, we see here that the Raven is going for it with Jason and Gideon. He adds T10 infantry and T11. So you guys want to make sure that when, you know, you're in the throne and palace battles, if you're an LT, you can definitely join now with your T10s. I know it's going to be a little bit of sacrifice, but it's a teamwork game. So, I mean, you don't have to give all your T10s, but if you can give here and there a bit, that's basically really helpful and that's participating and being a part of the kingdom as well but in addition to that since a lot of l um you want to make sure you have really good heroes on your wall if you're going to participate in the rally either get full reinforcements or participate in your home kingdom so that you can actually put all of your troops inside the alliance flags that are bubbled and then you can send in some t10s to help out Yes, a worthy opponent. He's going again against us. But the king guy is not adding any T10s. And it seems like all of his people are not adding T10s either. I think his rally is going to die a lot, actually, with no T10s. The reinforcement rallies, you want to put it a little bit... Uh, you want to time it just right. So if you're just beginning to participate in your own kingdom's rallies and stuff, just get the hang of it. Like if the three-minute rally is going on and you have a five-minute rally, I think you should start it right away when you see the three-minute rally go up. Because don't forget, if they are parked far away, like K174 right now is parked outside the mud, you want to make sure that you know they are probably going to walk and wait until both their rallies hit the same time. So you want to give yourself that time gap as soon as possible. That didn't really make any sense, but I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Because the worst part is if you arrive first and then they arrived after. Then it really defeats the whole purpose in your reinforcement rally. You want to be able to time it so that 
as they hit, you can reinforce right after the first one. It's kind of hard, and plus the game lies at that part too. Just do your best. We can't get perfect, but we can try. So I took out my army so that Peanut, one of the biggie players, can add it. And then someone zoomed in a bunch of archers, which I just saw. I'm not really sure who zoomed in, but now she can't even add it inside. Damn. I sigh, face palm, shake my head. Alright, so I'm hoping that since they're doing two times the infantry rally, that the archer will be able to counter the infantry and not any T10s inside right now in our palace will um, be okay, but let's see how it goes. Alright, now we wait till they hit. So usually if they're currently rallying, I would, um, in the beginning of the rally, I would probably begin rallying their castles. That's the smarter choice. But I think with the new battle logic, we're all kind of figuring out what to add and stuff. So that's why we're a little bit off our game this time. Oh, I guess they did really well taking the palace. It's because we probably didn't have any T10 infantry or because Jason actually kills Eritra really well. Well, ain't that some shiz. Okay, so it's that time. Two hours left. We're 174. The Raven is taking over our palace and we have to knock them out. It's our turn to get them to walk. Uh, the walk of shame. Let's go. So you see here where their reinforcement rally is going into the palace, but our rally hasn't even started yet. You want to avoid that as much as possible because that's just bad timing, but also a lot of times like if you know that your rally is going to hit before all of those hit, just let it hit first really quick and start a new one really fast. Preferably with whoever in your kingdom has the three minute rally, the L5s.
fast forward to the end of KVK, we were behind and we were losing for a long time, but we found this 74 million castle and we barely just got above really close in points. So right now we're at 114,000 to 78,000, which is really close in points. We're like hoping this pulls through and this person takes the two rallies that we have for it. Come on, come on, come on. So I'll sh show you how this plays out. You can, we can watch it together right now. Well, there are like pretty dragons everywhere. These are all ethereal top 20 players. Oh, you fancy. You can tell a lot about a situation by just looking at the surroundings. So the fact that there are two castles, three castles now, that just teleported in, reinforcing this castle. It means that this castle just dropped its shield. It's not online. Nobody has the account info. And they're freaking out because they're reinforcing it like crazy. Now the first rally of ours is about to hit. Oh, this is exciting. Oh, another castle popped in. Weird fish. That's the one that I noticed the most. Boom, our rally just hit. Nice, they had Rafe and Dolan on the wall. Booyah! Okay, let's go. We're in the lead again. Woohoo! It's like near the end of the KVK and I'm like panicking. This is the fight of no tomorrow. 197 to 150. Oh, damn. That's like super, super close. Super close in points right now. Freaking out. See, I told you guys earlier, the beginning and the end is the most, most crucial and like the most fun part of KVK because bubbles drop and you can just smash you know, whatever you find. These are the exciting moments right here. Not babysitting throne, but, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do for the kingdom. And babysitting throne is one of them. So, shout out to all the big players who have a lot of money <laughs> and spend all their time, you know, constantly feeding into the castle to be able to babysit throne and help take the win for the kingdoms <clears throat> spenders and non-spenders alike can play the game but we should all appreciate each other we need the spender and the non-spenders it just all works we need people the big spender can't win it alone and non-spenders cannot win either so honestly it goes hand in hand all right, so we're just gonna finish off this castle. Boom. Shout out to P. Hi, P. I know you're lurking. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to set another rally to this castle. Again, don't be like me and putting a hero on the wall and then taking it out to rally with because most likely you're going to forget. I've forgotten once and made that mistake, so that's why I remember now. Yeah, we're eating up this castle alive. So the advice I have for non-spenders at this time, whether you're L2, whether you're an L3 with T11s, you can definitely utilize and get some points at this moment, especially when you know that your kingdom is opening rallies for a castle, for example. You can um, wait till the rallies, let's say you couldn't get into any of the rallies, right? Or you're an L2 with lower troops. You can... Oh, this is our points right now, by the way. 270 to 215. Okay. 
So, going back to what I was saying for non-spenders, after the rally hits, the power, 84 million, I mean, sorry, that's the other one, but when the power to this castle goes down, you can time it right, wait till the power goes down enough so that you can start soloing it. And if you do this and you keep watching every single time, you know, rallies hit and then you can solo after, you'll be able to get points this way as well. Especially... If you couldn't get into the rally or, you know, you only need a little bit for the next chest. But let's say you opened all the chests already in the Conqueror and you opened all the Tournament of Kingdom chests. Yeah, it'd be good if you can get more points, you know, to be in top 20. But the best, you know, thing to do at that point if you opened all the chests already is to let your teammates get the kills and open the chests. Because... Like I said earlier, you can't really do this without a team. So here's a clip of me um, using my friend's castle to kill the castle. He has 11 million power left, so it's definitely soloable. I'm using a lot of fast pace because it is the end of KVK, and I want to make sure I get in the hits to get the kills. And then instead of... Uh, well, Troop Recall wasn't available, so instead of using Fast Pace to recall her best heroes, I used the Teleport instead because it's just more better than using Fast Pace to recall your troops, you know. I'd rather use Fast Pace to kill the enemy. And let's say you don't have Gideon like uh, she does right now, then just use your best two heroes because your best two heroes no matter what can kill the 11 million power castle because at this point that castle has no more infantry anyways so that's why i advise you if you are an l2 or an l3 that couldn't get into the rally or needed to open a few more chests for yourself to just make sure you're eyeballing you know like at the very end when all the rallies hit you can definitely solo to get yourself some points it's pretty easy, and you'll get the hang of it. But that's typically why I'm like fast pacing every single hit because a lot of people actually do this method in my kingdom as well. So I'm just trying to get the points right now. All right, we're trying. To, we hit that Bubba McQueen. All right, let's see. Oh uh, yeah. Yep, Raffi and Shrek on the wall again. Earlier in the middle of the video, someone else had that, and they got um, destroyed too with Beej and Gideon. I will suggest that if you're using Raffi and Shrek to not take a Be Beej and Gideon rally, but I'm actually very thankful that this guy took it. He is a brave McQueen. But we are getting to near the end of KVK, and just trying to scrap up as much points as possible because we're so close in battle like we haven't had a kvk that we're super close in battle like this for a while so 174 is really um throughout the whole kvk they didn't really put up a fight they bubbled a lot they didn't take any rallies so it was a really dry kvk it it felt like time took forever but at the very end when they're behind on points. They're really trying to up their game right now. Which makes it all the more exciting. Because that's what KVK is about, you know? To just fight. Fight to the death. I think it's what they say. I don't know. Okay, so currently, this just happened. One of our players fell asleep, and it's the end of KVK. He had 50 million powers.
at this point of time in the game when we're trying to do our very best to, you know, scavenge any points we could. This is, uh, a bit discouraging, considering the fact, you know, we can't really do anything about it. We're just kind of hoping we'll go back on at this point, but you gotta always think the worst, so. 84,000 to 14,000 right now. I'm more so like just at a loss for words at this point. Because it was the end of KBK and we, all, we were all trying so so hard. But it is what it is, you know. If someone fell asleep, there's nothing you can do about it. He has 21 million power left, and we're at 14,000 to 12,000. 2,000 difference. I might as well try to kill some monsters because, yeah, anything will help, right? Desperate times calls for desperate measures, and this is one of those times. Preset 4. Saves my life, this KVK. And this is basically what happened. And you can kind of guess where this is going. We tried our best to get back all the points but it is what it is and that just happened so I'm definitely not trying to call anybody out we made a bunch of mistakes this kvk you know it's not just that we're trying our best to go back up when we have made a lot of mistakes throughout the whole kvk they have 143 now we're at 70 it's a pretty big gap now But all in all, you know, yeah, so you whenever like any KVK loses, I'm pretty sure it's kind of the same in every kingdom. People get upset and disappointed because all the hours of staying up, almost like, you know, a, a lot of hours staying up and then to lose, but it is just a game, so... It's not going to end. Rise of the Kings is not the end. It's not D-Day. It's not the end of the world. In two more weeks, there will be another one to redeem ourselves. So, we'll do that. But to get the enemy from gaining more points, we had to kick our own team, me and... Try to zero ourselves, but <clears throat> yeah, if you look at the timestamp, um, on the top left corner, it's like 13 minutes left of KVK right now. 143, it's a pretty big gap right now it would have to take a miracle to get done at this point like i mean get ahead at this point but the best advice i can tell you is uh don't have a civil war if you lost one kvk it's not the end of the world there will be more, but 
the main goal is to keep a positive attitude and see how to help each other grow and win the next one. But of course, I'm not going to lie. Just like everyone else, it is, it does feel very, very, um, cruddy. Very, very cruddy. Or in other words, very shitty. Excuse the language, but it's true. It's sad. It's still a fun game, even if you lose, because you can definitely learn a lot. And the reason why I'm posting this video is because I'm trying to show you guys the whole journey of the KVK and highlights. Obviously, I can't put, you know, that many hours uploading the video, but... I hope you guys learned something about, you know, which heroes to defend with because there were some heroes throughout this KVK that I was even scared to solo. Like, I've tr I tried to solo this 20 million power castle. I think he had Dolan and Mari Ishtar on his wall. I'll have to get the screenshot of that. He only had 20 million power, but he was a really good... Um, castle in defense because he took an attack and he shielded right away and healed and then did the same exact thing even changed his name and his outfits so he did a really good job and I was even scared of him so that's what I'm saying you know the goal for these videos is for non-spenders to see like what heroes you can use to go against the spenders and for moderate spenders you can ex see like what heroes you should have a goal towards achieving first from all these videos. That's what I'm hoping to achieve by showing you guys all this. But that's pretty much it for the entire KVK K235 versus K174 in the first round of season two. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope you guys took something out of it. Share, like, and subscribe if you haven't. I would really appreciate it. See you later.